Welcome to Candid Chats with Bella on WCAS, thecauldron.net. Here is your hostess, Bella Donna Laveau. Hey, welcome to Candid Chats with Bella. I'm Bella, and I am here today with a wonderful artist who is nominated for Male Artist of the Year for the International Pagan Music Awards. I'm so excited to bring this guest to you. His name is Alexian. You're probably very familiar with him. He's a high priest of the Alexandrian tradition, founder and high priest of one of the oldest covens in Florida, established in 1993. Now, 1900s, that's like a whole lifetime away, doesn't it seem like? <laughs> 30 years. Yeah, that's fantastic for a coven. And graduated from Berklee College of Music in Boston. He is a singer-songwriter and has brought us all kinds of happiness through music to the pagan community. Alexian, thank you so much for being here. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. I really enjoy your friendliness. The thing that I noticed when I opened your webpage is that you are so warm and friendly. I felt like I had just walked into the living room of my best friend. It was really nice. And your music is, uh, it's an, I don't know what kind of, it's like the B-52s. I was like, oh, electronic masterpiece. I don't know. I really loved it. Me and Dusty <laughs> sat around listening to your music last night and dancing around. I'm a dancer. So your music really got me moving. Thank you so much for your gift and talent and for bringing it to the pagan community. I'm really interested in finding out where you come from and and how you managed to find your way to the path. So thank you again for having me on. Um, I was born and raised on a very small farm in Missouri, southern Missouri in the Ozarks. And, uh, you know, being a farm boy, you're, you're close to nature. And I used to, you know, play outside and uh, dig in the mud and climb trees and do all those things that farm boys do. Milk cows, mow hay and uh, bale it and put it in the hay barn and and all of that stuff. And over the course of of growing up, I, I noticed that my mother would have these psychic premonitions. And, you know, it, it, it actually is a gift that I have myself, although I'm thankful I don't have one of her specialties, which was she knew when people were going to die. She would have a very specific dream that she would go into a room and there would be somebody standing up front reading from a book and all they would say is people's names. And eventually they'd get to a name that was somebody we would know and within two weeks that person would get ill and and or just suddenly die so i'm i'm very thankful i did not get that but i am uh empathic i am you know pretty attuned to people and that i think led to the whole you know communication with uh spirit and animals and nature in general the fae if you will you know i used to play in the backyard and there were these stones and it was real obvious that they were gravestones but they had been they were flat they weren't standing up like tombstones they were literally just square blocks in the ground but spaced like two i think there were three actually three of them and but the writing on them had been so weathered that you couldn't read what they said anymore. So I used to play on those <laughs> all the time, you know, not really understanding as a child that it was gravestones. But I realized it as I got older. And when we built our new house on the farm, which was on the other side of the backyard, which, you know, reversed things for us, we actually had a ghost and the ghost would move things around in the house. Um, make things shudder and shake from time to time. And it seemed that every time I would be practicing the piano as a child in this room by myself, that it would come. And so I, I, I learned at a very young age to talk to it and say, you know, listen, I'm practicing my piano right now. You need to let me concentrate on this. I, I, you're like freaking me out, man, you know? <laughs> It would listen and it would calm down and I would go back about my business. This actually happened as well when I moved to Boston to go to Berkeley College of Music. The dormitory at um, the college, the main 
uh, dormitory is actually the old Boston Sheraton Hotel. And uh, it's the Boston Hotel, the Sheraton Hotel, where the Boston Strangler actually killed a bunch of people back in the day. And it's very haunted. That that place is freaky, ugh, haunted. And there is a janitor. I'm convinced it was a janitor. And he still does his rounds. And all of us uh, kids, when we were in college, would experience this. One of my roommates actually got chased down the hall by footstep late at night. This is a very macho guy. He's a drummer from Houston, Texas. And he came in the room like he was like white as a sheet he was scared to death things would move in the room you'd hear breathing sometimes well i started talking to that too and it listened and you know all of this stuff just started snowballing and then one day i was in college and i met a young man the same age as me through a mutual friend and he had on a pentacle and i had been seeing pentacles uh, floating in front of me like giant shields because you have to understand I came straight from the farm and was plucked off the farm out of the field and placed down in Back Bay, Boston in the middle of a big city just like that overnight. So I went through a huge culture shock. Just subconsciously, I would be walking down the road, uh, you know, the side of the street and um I would see, like, visualize these big shields in front of me to, of protection, and it was always a star. And so I didn't understand what was happening. And one uh, year, like my second, it would have been my second or third year. Wait, let me think. Da, 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 da. Like my second or third year of college, my sister came to visit, and she was really into New Age stuff and channeling, you know, back in the in the 80s channeling we went to our first metaphysical bookstore hand in hand scared out of our minds right and uh she's seven years older than me and she was interested in channeling so the bookstore attendant took her to that section and all of a sudden i looked up and i saw this big blue book with a big pentacle on the front cover and i went straight over to it and i plucked it off the shelf and i started looking at it and this very beautiful lady came waltzing up to me with this big smile on her face, dark raven black hair, white face. And she goes, oh, you're interested in Wicca. And she grabbed the book out of my hand, grabbed my hand and pulled me to the floor. And I thought at the time, how odd. I'm sitting on the floor in the middle of a bookstore. You don't do that. That's not proper. My mom would have spanked me if I did this, right? right. Um, so it was just very odd that I was being pulled down to sit on the floor. So we had a little powwow and her name was Deborah. She's very well known in the New England community back then. And she introduced me and talked to me about Wicca. And I ended up buying that book. Yes, it was Uncle Bucky's big blue book of witchcraft. Uh, the Complete Book of Witchcraft by Raymond Buckland. And when I read the first chapter, I started crying because it was everything that I've ever felt, it's everything that I've ever believed, and I knew I was home, and the craft was for me. So I ended up going back to the guy that I saw the pentacle on and talked to him, and it turned out that him and another friend were getting a study group together, so I joined the study group. So it ended up eventually being four of us, and we kind of exhausted that, and when that kind of exhausted after about a year, I got a call out of the blue from Lord Starspawn, and he became my teacher. And he was a member of the first Alexandrian coven in the United States from the line of Dubandia Grachel. So my lineage in the Alexandrian tradition goes back to that. And Starspawn took me under his wing and trained me. And I became initiated and the rest is history. I just kept going. So that's how I came into the craft. It was natural, organic, and then seeing the pentacles psychically and then seeing the book with the pentacle and then running into this person randomly at school. You know, it was all quote unquote coincidence. Yeah, that's how the journey takes you, right? That's how you know you're home. That's really amazing. So you, you have that, that is a very common journey of, you know, you find witchcraft and you go, oh, this is what I am. This is what I am. This, I'm a witch. That makes sense now. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then and then you brought music into it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So I've always been the musician at age four. I okay, so <laughs> here's the story. So my aunt Betty contacted my mother and said, You need to take those young children to church, those young heathen children. And so my mom, being the youngest of 12, got us all dressed up. We went to a church and I was like, what is happening? What is this place? Am I in school? Because I was like four years old, right? I thought I was at school. I remember very clearly being in Sunday school, having to color a picture of Jesus. And I was so concerned because I was not a really good colorer and I was going outside the lines and I raised my hand and I said, is it okay if I go outside the lines? And they said, oh, that's perfectly fine. And, and and then they handed me a purple crayon. And I thought, you want me to color this person purple? This is stupid. <laughs> anyway, then we went out to the main congregation. And they had a special guest that day. And it was a man. And this man was going to go up and do something special. Well, he went up to the front of the congregation. And he sat at this desk. I thought it was a desk. It was a piano. He put his hands on the desk. And he started moving them. And my brain exploded. It was just like, up until then, you have to understand, I'm in the middle of nowhere on a farm. My mother would sing to me. Occasionally, we'd get the radio skipping in on a cloudy day, and it was either gospel or country. That was it. So to have a live musician in front of me was like an unexpected experience, and my brain just exploded. So from that moment, I had to have a piano. So I asked my parents for a piano at four. I asked at five years old, at six years old, at seven years old. Finally, at eight years old, my parents finally took me seriously and said, we got to buy this child a piano. He's going to drive us crazy. So I got my first piano at age eight, and I started taking piano lessons. So I've always been the musician since four years old. So when I discovered the craft, at that time, I was going to become a rock and roll star. Of course, you know, who wouldn't back in the 80s? But the goddess had other plans. And spontaneously i started writing songs about paganism and wicca and the goddess and the earth and my heart just started you know writing and eventually i got enough songs to put together to do my first album which i produced myself on a little eight track cassette tape recorder using Sempty for those nerds that are out there that understands what Sempty is to sync the tape to the computer And then the computer would play the synthesizers that were outbound hardware instruments at the time. All of this was recorded in my apartment shortly after moving to Florida, right after college. Wow. I I just can see a little four-year-old Alexian seeing a piano for the first time and losing his mind and not being able to stop. What a gift, right? What a gift. And to find it in church. That's incredible. So I want, I mean, we've been, we've been talking for a minute. I really want to play some of your music for people because I know that they, they can't wait to hear it. And sure. people who've never heard you before are going to be like that little four-year-old kid and go, what? <laughs> so Lola, what, tell us what you have planned for us. Uh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> first of all, I want to tell you, I, I absolutely relate to the Uncle Bucky's Big blue book because that was my first too, which a lot of witches it was, but I found it in a bookstore and I actually had to sneak read it because I knew that I wasn't supposed to be looking at witchcraft stuff. So I would go in the corner of the bookstore. I was I was in my late teens, early twenties, and would sneak in the corner and read it. But I never bought it until I finally got the nerve, like months later. So I, I just related to finding the, that big blue book in that bookstore. Like, oh my gosh! Oh this yeah. Is it. <laughs> I, I would like to take a take a poll one day about who all came to the craft because of Buckland's big blue book. Yes. Because I would bet there is a preponderance of it. <laughs> well, you have to understand too. Back in the eighties, there weren't a lot of Wicca paganism books out at all i mean oh yeah 
you know, you could count them on both hands. I mean, there were just very few books out. It's not like the reality of the glut that is today where everybody and their puppy has written a book about Wicca 101, right? Oh, um, yeah. But oh, yeah. I, I tell a story about how um, I used to go to the bookstore and buy all the books on witchcraft every year. And the, the one year I bought nine books and I was over the moon because there were nine new books of witchcraft on the market. And then the next year I went to the bookstore and there were so many I couldn't buy them all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I what I noticed in the in the store that I went to. It was a new age store and they had a tiny little uh section on wicca and um i think they had like three books and that was the one that they that's the one that stands out that blue book I, that was wonderful marketing actually caught mm-hmm. your attention that big pentagram on the front it's like absolutely yep yep it draws you in so i i appreciate hearing that because it just was like yeah that was me too your music oh my gosh so i i just when i was listening to your music i'm i was a teenager in the 80s so i listened to a lot of synth you know the synth wave music and um like bella had said earlier there's a b52s feeling which i was like that's it that's it so it it's brought me back to a time that i when I was, there was an innocent time in my life, believe it or not, uh, being a teenager in the 80s and dancing to that kind of music. So I appreciate your sound kind of brought me back to that. And, of course, I could relate to the to the content. I want to talk about, um, first of all, before we start talking about the first song, what, what were some of your influences? <laughs> musically. <I'm, laughs> musically, yes. Um, Oh, my goodness. So back in the 80s, I was a big pop rock boy. Cindy Lauper, Huey Lewis was my idol. I actually got to see Huey Lewis perform at the Boston Orpheum Theater. He was like 12 feet away from me. It was amazing. Heart. I love Ann Wilson. Annie Lennox. I mean, you know, all the big 80 pop stars. That was my thing. Right. Yep. So, you know, then as, you know, the 90s came, it was more dancey music, um, got kind of into the club dance sound. And I'm trying to re-emulate some of that now with the dance sounds that I'm coming up with. But I got some really interesting new stuff coming. We'll have to talk about that in a, in a minute. But yeah, um, very, very varied uh, influences, everything from classical to pop to rock to dance not really country not really heavy metal not really rap but uh more on the lyrical side of things yeah and you know i in the 90s i was i spent a lot of time at the gay clubs and so i the dance music at the gay clubs was my favorite um, the mm-hmm. club music and stuff like that. That was my favorite stuff to dance to. And it, just so much fun. Just so much fun. And that and that's the feeling I get from your music is that that time of just just having a great time. Your your song, um, Cool to Be a Witch, I so both versions of this song I absolutely love. The original version, it had this kind of like fifties rock and roll yeah. sock pop. It's a boogie of, woogie. It's a yes. it's a boogie woogie blues. Yeah. Yes, I and and that just made me just really appreciate that you could bring that to a, a in a modern sense. And then of course I listened to the dance remix and was like, okay, yeah, this is this is totally up my alley. I love that you say, you were saying what a world, what a world from a Wizard of Oz. That just yes. made me laugh. It just so, made me laugh. The story behind Cool to Be a Witch not a lot of people know about is I was hanging out with some friends, again, shortly after I moved to Florida, and it was a bunch of Wiccan pagan friends, and somebody said, oh, man, it's so cool to be a witch, and I just I just popped up in my seat, and I'm like, song title, you know, <laughs> and I just Absolutely. could not stop, and I ran to the piano and it spontaneously came out of me and I, I set the boogie boogie uh, bass line and, and, and before you knew it, we, I had half the song written in like 15 minutes, you know, it's and my, so my friends were just laughing and laughing and that just egged me on even more, you know, so that's where that song came from. What made you decide to do a dance remix of that particular song? Well... Okay, so that's partly because I'm trying to, you know, resurrect from the ashes and be the phoenix here. 
<laughs> so yeah. <laughs> uh, my first album was, uh, you know, recorded way back in 92. And it it's literally been, you know, over 20 rah, 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 years. And I've been working and working and working. You know, we can all relate to the work, right? Paying the bills, paying the bills. And I, I teach music on, online now. I used to teach in person, but I've been teaching online exclusively since January of 2010. I teach voice and piano and all sorts of stuff, but debt free now. Oh, so wonderful. because we're debt free, it's time to play, baby. It's time to play. So now, you know, starting in 2010, I started to like reinvent my sound and try to bring things up to date. And people know me best by Cool to Be a Witch. I think that's the biggest hit off the first album. So I thought, let me just do a dance remix of it. That would be fun. And so I did. Well, you you done good with it. I love it. So I would like to hear the dance version. Um, I I think everyone would really appreciate that here on the radio station. So let's go ahead and, and take some time to get our dancing shoes on and, you know, turn those lights, club lights on. And let's listen to Cool to Be a Witch, the dance remix uh, by Alexian here on WCAS, the cauldron.net. When I'm flying through the air on my broom, I like to zoom down the chimney to my living room. I hop right off and I begin to cook. I toil and I trouble from a big black book. It's easy these days with the microwaves that be. It's cool to be a witch in this century. Yeah, it's cool to be a witch. It's cool to be a wow, 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 wow. Boots. 
what a world. What a great song. Oh my gosh. I just was dancing and shaking my booty to that. So I just love it so much, Alexia. And you're so fun. It comes out through a lot of your music. Um, I, I just appreciate your vibe very, very much. Um, I want to talk about another song that just really, um, I just love it. I thought the the tango vibe of this song, You Only Love Me For My Brain. I, I heard this and I just was like, what is that? What is that's tango, right? Am I am I identifying that correctly? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> good. I can, can you tell us about that song? So, You Only Love Me For My Brain was inspired by my first boyfriend. His name is Mark Manley. Hey, Mark, if you're listening to this. He's an artist. He's a actually a macabre artist. He lives in Kansas City, Missouri. He started filming a zombie film, uh, which I hope he will finish at some point because the idea he has, which I'm not going to give away, is brilliant in my opinion absolutely brilliant for a zombie flick he had kind of mentioned it to me and brought up the fact that he would be interested in you know me writing a song for the the movie you know even if it's just for like the credits or at the beginning you know the title theme song or whatever so little by little slowly i don't do things fast I don't know if you've picked up on that yet, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I, uh, I like to take things slow, you know, and easy and get it just right. There you go. Uh huh. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I thought about how can I write a, zom a zombie song? You know, zombies are, you know, what are you, what are you going to do with that? So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if there was a couple and one of them turned to a zombie and was chasing their lover. And then I thought, it's a love song. What better type of dance feel than a tango for a love dance, right? Oh, yeah. So the idea is, so when I write my songs, like any song, I actually end up having a visual in my mind's eye. It's like I have a music video already in my head as I'm writing the song. That's just the way I work. So I have this whole movie in my head about this lover being bitten and turning into a zombie and then going after their loved one and chasing them through the town, through the churchyard, you know, trying to get them. And the whole time the guy is running for his life and he's saying, the only reason you love me is because you want to eat my brain, you know? So that's, <laughs> That's where the idea came from, but I wanted it to have this tango-esque feel to it, you know. So it's totally a tongue-in-cheek comedy song like Cool to Be a Witch is. It is a zombie song made for my ex's film. It, it Hopefully, he again, he will finish that. And that's where it came from. So I finally got it written, got it recorded, and released it not too long ago, a couple years ago oh for Samhain. Yeah. Well, well, now I have to re-listen to it now knowing the story because I totally was just thinking I, I pictured two people kind of doing the tango, but kind of back and forth, one reaching out for the other and the other one kind of like, you only love me for my brain. Now I'm going to picture the zombie chasing him. So I, I'm excited to hear it through. Uh, yes that, that, that site <laughs> and exactly and then i'm hoping i i you know i'm not a young spring chicken anymore but i just got on tiktok <laughs> so for all of your tiktok people out there listening look for me on tiktok but i'm hoping the reason i'm bringing this up is at the very end of the song you only love me for my brain i put that where you know they're eating each other's brains out basically <laughs> there's a sound yeah. effect and i'm <laughs> hoping that somebody will grab that sound on tiktok and start making silly mo uh you know videos with it oh oh that, challenge. that would be so funny i love tiktok that would be hilarious i am going to you know dusty's got like thirty thousand followers on tiktok I'm gonna oh, I him, had no idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to tell him that you're on there and you want to hail start it. I just joined and I have one video up of me singing. Uh, we all come from the goddess, but I start in a woman's range way up high in my falsetto without showing my face. 
and then I do a slow reveal, and here's this old, you know, salt and peppered bearded man singing like a woman. And then, it, and then it comes down low into a man's range. You'll have to see it. It's funny. I'll go friend you. I'll go friend you. Yeah, look for Dusty because he thinks you're awesome. And if you tell him D this is the part, he'll totally do it. He does that all the time. Yeah, he'll think Challenge. that's awesome. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Well, let's go ahead and listen to this awesome song uh, here on WCAS, the cauldron.net. It is called You Only Love Me for My Brain by the amazing Alexian. Let's give it a go.
Welcome back to Candid Chats with Bella as we continue our wonderful chat with Alexian here on WCAS, the cauldron.net. Alexian, oh, that song is so fun. And yes, the tango vibe, it, it really does make me want to put a rose. And I noticed the cover of the of the single, you had the rose in your teeth. But now it makes sense why you look like a zombie on that. <laughs> exactly. I was, I was I actually, kind of confused, but now it makes sense. <laughs> I, I've actually had people email me and tell me they don't like the cover. It scares them. I'm like, really? I love it. I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. I, 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 from just glancing at it, and I have terrible vision, but I was like, oh, he looks kind of gothy and stuff. So I totally loved it. So you had mentioned during the break you had a couple um, new songs you're working on, a, a project you're working on. Do you want to let people know what that is? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'd just like like to talk real quickly about actually three different songs I'm working on at the same time. The first one is almost done. Um, it won't be long before I release it. It's called The Challenge, and that comes from our own grandmother Elspeth. I don't know if you know grandmother Elspeth, but she's grandmother uh, to the world. I know grandmother uh, Elspeth, yes. Yes, everybody yes. knows grandmother Elspeth and founder of Green Song. She wrote an incredible poem called The Challenge, and she gave it to me several years back, and she asked me to set it to music. Well, I have, and that will be released very soon. It's an incredible message for the world about taking care of each other and Mother Earth. So look for that to come out soon. Shortly after that, I will be hopefully releasing Merry Meet. Now, Merry Meet is a song that I'm working on with Spectral. Spectral is a group that I formed that is a voluntary group. And if you're interested, there's information on my website at Alexian Music. Com. But basically, you're volunteering to sing background vocals on my music that I record and release to the world. Also, I'm looking for dancers. I'm looking for belly dancers, tribal dancers, and just plain old dance the bonfire dancers. Uh, not so much ballroom. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this is to be actually in my music videos that will go with the songs. So if you're interested in Spectral, check out my website and sign up. It's free and it is a voluntary posi posi position. I can't say the word. Um, but Merry Meet is the first song that's going to be featuring the Spectral group. It is in Latin, partially, and partially in wow. English. And it has an Arabic feel to it. Middle Eastern sound. So it's very wow. different. Yeah. You know, I like to keep y'all guessing. <laughs> Absolutely. I, you got, I got, I've went from boogie woogie to dance to pop to to, you know, drumming and chanting like the crone chant a lot of people like the the drumming chanting song the crone chant you know i i do a little bit of everything i'm like madonna i like to keep reinventing my music but i'm being silly so <laughs> <laughs> Merry Meet is coming soon. And the last one that I'll bring up is Walk the Path of Wittershins. Walk the Path of Wittershins is another dance song. And my husband says that's my drag queen song. <laughs> And the intent behind that song is about magic. And it, the song itself can be used as a spell. You dance the song and actually dance your wishes into being. The first half of the song is banishing. Because if you really want something incredible to come into your life, you first need to make room for it. Nature abhors a void. So make the void and then fill it. So dance the path of wisdom is about making that void and letting go. And then the other half of the song is about turning around and dancing Dishal and bringing that energy in and in visualizing what you want to manifest into your life to fill that void. So it's a, it's actually a song that is a spell. That's incredible. I love that. And I, you, I love that you said it's your drag queen song because I just found a post on Facebook where someone said, um, come up with witchy drag queen names. Do you have a witchy drag queen name, Alexian? Uh, oh, yes, honey. Of course what, I do. Well, what is it? Everybody does. Now, if you don't know how to figure out your drag queen name, what you do is you take the name of your first pet. Mm-hmm. Think about for a second, what's the name of your first pet? And then the name of the first street that you lived on. And it has to be a name street. It can't be like third street. It has yeah. to actually have a name. So my drag name is Miss Yum Yum Washington. <laughs> 
Now, see, I already had a drag queen name, and that is Lady Peking Duck. But uh, by your standards, it would be Brandy Canary. <laughs> which I Miss also Brandy like. Canary. <laughs> Mine doesn't sound good. See, my name, my, my magical name here is Lola Stardust, which I always said sounds like either a stripper name or a drag queen name. <laughs> I would be Miss Chewy Monroe. <laughs> Actually, that's quite nice. I like it. <laughs> Oh, Chewie, you're never going to get past that with me. That's that's your name. <laughs> I really liked Star Wars when I was little, and I named my rabbit Chewie after Chewbacca. So <laughs> that's <adorable>. awesome. <laughs> All right. So thank you for sharing the upcoming uh, music. We'll be on the lookout for that, and I'm sure WCAS will be playing those songs when they come out. Um, let's go ahead and take a commercial break and station identification time. You've been listening to Candid Chats with Bella as we chat with the the Miss... I'm sorry, was that Miss uh, Brand... Yeah. Uh, Miss Brandy? Oh, wait, what was it? Miss. <laughs> what was what your was, drag queen name? Your drag queen name, what was that again? Mine is Brandy Canary. I thought you were asking for Alexians. Alexians, what was yours? Yum Yum Washington. <laughs> You've been listening to our chat with Miss Yum Yum Washington <laughs> here on WCAS, <laughs> and we'll return after this break. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. Be the someone who gives their time. Be the someone who lends an ear. Be the someone who takes a step. This is Christina Ricci with Rain asking you to join the fight against sexual violence and volunteer in your community. Log on to RAIN.org, that's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G, to learn how you can be the someone. This message brought to you by the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network and this station. Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Cloud the Pagan Rapper, and if you want to learn more about my music and pagan hip-hop, you can find me at cloudrapswicca.bandcamp.com. Or you can purchase it by clicking the link below. I want to thank you all for listening to my unique brand of hip-hop music right here on WCAS, the Radio.net. Music for your soul. Welcome back to Candid Chats with Bella as we continue our chat with Alexian here on WCAS, the Cauldron.net. And here's Bella. Hey, welcome back. Oh, Alexi, and I'm going to resist calling you yum yum, but uh, pet names are my thing. <laughs> so music is such a powerful way of raising energy. But you talked about how when you were young, you grew up in on the farm. And so I'm wondering what other kind of match, because, you know, like I'm I'm all big into the wheel of the year. I do the wheel of the year. That's my big thing. And um, I'm an astrology witch. So what what magic backs up other than, you know, Wicca? What disciplines back up your your energetics, your power, your magic? Well, I always say that I got two different things from both sides of the family. My mom's side was the sensitive side, you know, the psychic side. And my father's side being what we thought was German until I did my DNA test. Turns out I'm Viking from Norway, 45% Norwegian bloodline. Wow. Yeah. So I, I sense that the ability to manifest and utilize and direct energy comes from my father's side of the family. And on my mom's side was the sensitive part. So interestingly enough, my grandfather, apparently, who died before I was born, was a very well-known water witch in the Ozark that people would actually hire and pay him in the county he lived in to go out and use the divining rods, you know, the stick, uh, to find out where to dig for your well to get water. And my grandfather, this is on my mom's side, also knew a lot about herbs. And the stories go that he would take, and again, my, my mom is the youngest of 12. He would take the kids, my aunts and uncles, out into the forest and he'd say, you see that weed and you see that flower, you grind those up and you put them together and it makes this and it does this with it. Well, unfortunately, it went in one ear and out the other. And that herbal information was lost. There was only a 
know, a few things that were passed down to me, but very few. But I felt very close to my grandfather, even though he died before I was born. And it turned out that he taught my father how to do the divining rod. And I <laughs> I used to ask him growing up, what are you doing, dad? And he goes, oh, I'll tell you about it later. You know, he'd just blow it off. You have to understand my father was all in all sense uh, of the word a cowboy. He was a farmer. He was the artificial inseminator of cattle. And basically, to make a long story short, he got an award for breeding over one million cattle in his lifetime. So it wasn't like him to share things like that. And so it, it amazed me that he was doing those things. Well, finally, when I became like a senior in high school, he took me out into the field and he showed me. And he said that my grandfather always said that the divining rod had to be cut from a fruit tree. Now, since I've started studying on my own, it's really obvious why it should be a fruit tree because you want your divining rod to be supple. It needs to bend. It needs to be wick, right? It needs to be able to bend and point. So uh, he taught me how to hold the fork stick and how to cut it and how to prepare it and then walk around in the field. And he didn't look for wells. My dad was always losing tools in the field. <laughs> so he... <laughs> He would use them to go find his tools. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And so that was kind of a cool thing that was passed down. And he used to taste the dirt. I, I remember going out and sampling the field with him. And he would take a little pinch of dirt, put it on his tongue. And depending on how the acidity of the soil taste, he knew what ratio of, you know, pH fertilizer to put on the fields to make the crops grow better. Something else that I learned from my father was the persimmons to forecast the winter, the spoons, the forks, and the knives. So that's all over the internet these days, so you can look that up. But if you look up persimmons and forecasting winter, you'll learn all about it. My dad taught me about that. And we used to have persimmon trees on our farm that were there, and we would go pick up the persimmons every fall to get to get to know what was going to happen in the winter. I also had an odd experience with my sister at a very young age on the farm, which has nothing to do with the craft, but I, we did have a UFO experience in broad daylight. I was very little. We would go to Springfield, Missouri, which was an hour and a half away. And if I was a good boy, I would get a helium balloon. That was my treat a helium balloon. So we had come home early that day from Springfield and um, my sister was watching me. She's seven years older. I was like five, six, seven years old. So she was like early teens and a gust of wind came up and my balloon got pulled around the side of the house. I had tied a stick onto the end of the string and I would throw it up and the weight of the stick would just ever so slightly bring it back down to earth. And that was my game, you know, balancing out the helium with weight of a stick or something. But my balloon got sucked around the side of the corner of the house. So I ran around the corner of the house to get my balloon. I look up and there's a giant well, not giant, but like the size of a car, silver bullet floating in the air, about 15 maximum feet off the ground. I'd say it's more like 12 feet to 15 feet off the ground, right above the electric lines, right next to the house. It had no sound. It was flat on the left and came to a point on the right, like a bullet on its side. It made no noise. It had no windows, no doors, no rivets, but it was very solid and very right there and it kind of hovered there for a minute and my sister came around the side of the house and stood next to me she's like what's going on she looked up and she saw it and she froze then she she hit me with her arm and said go get mom and get the camera i could not move it was like i was paralyzed with fear she turned her head towards the house and yelled for my mom when she did that it startled me and i started screaming and i looked at the house for mom you know please come save us from this odd thing in the sky right when we turned turned our heads back, it was gone. It was over our neighbor's house already in a blink of an eye. That's over two miles away. When you're on the farm, farms are miles away from each other. This little bullet was hovering over the house 
over the barn, back and forth, kind of moving ever so gently back and forth. My mom comes out of the house with a potato in one hand, a potato pillar in the other, and says, what? At that moment, it went zip across the uh, the skyline, you know, the horizon, and disappeared that quick. It was just gone. Ever since that day, it's just been weird, you know? You see a lot of alien movies, and you hear a lot of crazy things, and most of the stuff makes me laugh and chuckle, but the little aliens with the big dark eyes freak me out and there's no reason for that to happen but yeah it's it's oh, been man. i have alien stories too yo it's, it's so exciting we were sitting in the hot tub there were three of us in the hot tub at, at, out here at the mother church and we're looking up in the sky right and there's this perfectly square constellation and we're like what what constellation is square like i don't which what you know because i'm i'm all into astrology and so we're all staring at it and all of the sudden three of the stars move and form mm-hmm. a line beside the one that was part of a square that didn't move and then each one of them just zoop disappears zoop zoop and then there was just one star there and we all looked at each other and we're like what just happened it's really it's really unsettling when it happens because you're like that that just happened did that happen did you know what i mean like did that happen i can't imagine being a child and seeing that but yeah dusty has all kinds of weird experiences with ufos too that's that I w- <laughs> this is a time when you wish you could like um see on video because i sat there with my mouth open half of your story and was like oh shut your mouth oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it really did happen, you know, it's it's yeah. a very firm memory in my mind, and the odd part about the whole thing is then we promptly forgot about it, which is very odd, and it wasn't talked about. And then one day after college, I was talking to my sister on the phone and I went, oh my God, do you remember we had that UFO experience? And she was like, I completely forgot about that. Now who would forget something like that, you know? So it was almost like our memory had been suppressed or something and it finally boiled back to the top. I don't know, but it was an odd experience to say the least. And again, out in the middle of nowhere, right? But it was broad daylight. It was still daylight. It was probably like four or five o'clock in the afternoon. Noon. Wow, incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, as witches, I, we, was, go I, ahead. I was just going to say, as witches, it doesn't surprise me that I've, I know a lot of witches who have seen something like UFOs or have had some sort of alien experience, abduction, or, you know. Because it doesn't surprise me because I, I feel like we op- we open up more than what those magical realms and I feel like we're a beacon, we're a light and we're kind of mm. like, hey, look at us other planets or other life forms, you know, and mm-hmm. and I think they come to check us out. You know, and then the scientific part of me, I'm a very balanced person elementally, you know, earth, air, fire, water, and I have my very intuitive, earthy, let me run, you know, you know, feel the earth between my toes. But then I also am a geek. I'm totally a science guy, right? Uh, Live long and prosper. (laughs) So uh, that side of me is always taking everything with a grain of salt. Even my own experience, I know it happened, but I don't know what it is. Was it of this earth? Definitely not. Was it us coming back in time? Perhaps. Was it aliens from another planet? Perhaps. Was it visitors from another dimension? Possibly. You know, I don't know what it was. I don't know what happened. I don't know why my memory is foggy, but I do know how I feel about it. And I do know how it makes me feel when I talk about it. A lot of times when I talk about it, I'll start stuttering even, which is not like me at all. So anyway... It happened. That's all I can say. Well, that's an incredible story. Dusty has had experiences of getting um, abducted. Like he he will just end up in the bed upside down. And I'm like, what what is this all about? But it's like the aliens don't know how to put him back in the bed right or something. It's really weird. And <laughs> he's had this weird scar show up on his belly. That was it's just it's crazy. One of the things that I noticed about pagans, though, we had I was on a game show a couple of days ago, and we, so it was like. 
like do which is agree on everything and when she brought up aliens everybody agreed i think that it's hubris to think that we're the only intelligent life in the universe and oh, for sure that, yeah probably a common thing with pagans and plus we're we all like star trek <laughs> well also we worship life force energy right so what an amazing confirmation of life on other worlds right Yes. I mean, that is just on a spiritual level, that's an amazing thing just to comprehend as well. Well, that is one very interesting story that you probably aren't going to find all over the world. <laughs> No. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, alien stories are fantastic. So you you mentioned a lot of stuff about your parents. One of the things that we probably don't talk about a lot is about being born a witch. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole thing, the concept of you don't know that you're a witch and then you find out you are and then you look at your family and you go, that's what that was all about. Mm -hmm. Persimmons and stuff. The Ozarks have some pretty interesting deep magic, like the Appalachian magic. So it, do you know any Appalachian witches? And do those two traditions, those kind of land traditions, do they mix? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Appalachian Mountains stretch down into Tennessee and then down into, you know, if you follow the line, it goes into southern Missouri and northern Arkansas. If you, you know, I was, my hometown is just like 30, 40 miles north of Arkansas. You know, it's not that far. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on in those hills. Let me tell you, <laughs> um, there's a lot of folk magic, a lot of folk customs and traditions that come from the Appalachian settlers that are very powerful. You know, root magic and, and work the workings and stuff, they, they work. And we just were raised with things like that. They were just customs or just the way things are done. You know what I'm saying? But we don't talk about it in church. Absolutely. I absolutely know what you're talking about. You, one of my best friends is um, Appalachian Folk Witch. She learned it from her family. And when we met, she was like, oh, they've been teaching me witchcraft all these years. Now I understand. <laughs> Yeah. So it has been just an absolute joy, Alexian. You have so much fun and it it's just a great storyteller and a great musician. What a wonderful gift that you have given to us today. Thank you for giving us your time and your love and your My pleasure. joy. Yes, and your magic. Thank you so much. So Alexian, if people want to get more of you in their life if they want to to come and see you if they want to learn about you maybe even study with you how do they get in touch with you well a great place to start is on my website at alexianmusic.com that's alex a-l-e-x with an i-a-n as in nancy alexian music Dot com. From there, you can find everything, including my Facebook. I should say I just um, recently in the last year started a Facebook group called Alexian Music Group. I'm doing a lot of things in there, including a monthly bonfire bardic circle where I host it. Think Pagan Open Mic. So if you like to tell stories, if you have songs or chants or poetry you'd like to share, come join us, sign up. It's free. And I broadcast that out on my YouTube and Twitter, as well as in Facebook. But I also have an Instagram and I also have just started, like I mentioned before, a TikTok. Now, most things can be reached at Lord Alexian. I had to use the Lord, which is my title from Alex Alexandrian Wicca, because when I went to get my social media platforms, Alexian was already taken. So I'm like, I don't want to be Alexian 23, right? So I was like, what am I going to do? So I decided to use my title, Lord Alexian. So if you just search whatever platform and put in Lord Alexian, You'll find me. Excellent. Thank you so much for being with us here today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. This has been fun. Yeah, it's been a blast. Lola, you want to take us out? Absolutely. Thank you for listening to Candid Chats with Bella on thecauldron.net. Have a wonderful week, and we will chat with you again real soon. Blessed be. Blessed be.